Our first reading this morning is taking from, from Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 8 from the asterisk. O Lord, our governor, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, What is man that you should be mindful of him? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. O Lord, our governor, our second reading this morning is taken from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, saying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Of 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Please be seated. What does a name mean to you? What does your name mean to each and every one of you? My name, Shelton, means deep valley. And my last name, Radix, means root in Latin. So together, if I put them together, it means rooted deeply in the valley, I guess. I've always been told that a person's name is the greatest connection to their own identity and their own individuality. Some might say that a name is the most important word in the world of a person. In life, your parents shaped you using everything in their tools, from their warmth, their strictness, their generosity, and sometimes their pushiness. But what many people haven't thought about much in life is the consequences of one particularly important gift that was bestowed on them by their parents, and that is their name. Whether you like it or not, it will be how society in initial will view you. You only have to ask someone who now has the name Karen how they are viewed by today. Our parents agonized over our names. They agonized over each name given to each one of their children. For many parents, it's a test of their creativity or an expression of their love for a family member. Unfortunately, some parents might not fully realize that their choice to make their ch take, take their children's name could play an important part in shaping how their child will live, how their child will live for the rest of their life, and how they will be taught, or looked at, or interacted with. For years, for example, researchers have proven that ethnic names in America are less likely, less likely to attract interviews as compared to someone who has a more European sounding name. Thus a name can cause a child to be exposed to social biases before even people meet him. So a name is very important. Jesus the Christ and his cousin John the Baptist, names were chosen not by their parents, but by God himself. And at the time, you've got to remember, if you had a boy and he was your first boy, it was important and expected that that boy would be named after the father. So for these children to be named after someone other than the father was not the norm. Luke writes in his gospel, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been answered. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call him John. Zechariah asked the angel then, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and I have, <clears throat> I am an old man, and my wife is well among, along in her years. But the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Zachariah accepted the angel's word, and when he was struck deaf on John's naming, when asked, what the child's name would be. His wife said, John. And everyone was perplexed and said, 
but there's no John in your family. And so they turned to Zechariah, who was at that point a mute, and said to him, what will the child's name be? And he wrote on a scribe, his name shall be John. And at that moment, he was able to speak again. God made his decision, and they accepted it. The English name John comes from the Hebrew Yekanan, meaning Yahweh is gracious. John's job was to introduce the Messiah who would die for the sins of the world. The Messiah who would be buried, raised again on the third day for our lives and to deliver us from death. Thus God's grace came to introduce Jesus, who in turn delivered us. Jesus, now on the other hand, who is the incarnate Son of God, also named by his Father. Jesus is the Greek name of Joshua, in Hebrew, Yoshua, which means the Lord is salvation. The name in scripture means, is meant to communicate that the Lord and the Lord alone saves his people. He alone saves his people from evil and from, by his sovereignty and by his grace. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, an angel of the Lord too appeared before Joseph and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what she has conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. But like Joshua, Jesus does not come merely to save his people from physical dangers or physical enemies in the world, but he comes to give them victory over spiritual evil that alienates them from God. So the name Jesus then identifies the Christ. The baby as one person, one person alone, can save the people of God and bring them into their eternal inheritance. The name tells us that this human baby is God and he has come for all of us. In Isaiah 43 verse 11, God says, I am the Lord and besides me, there is no savior. Jesus said later in his life, the Father and I are one. Jesus' naming them is a very important thing to us because it establishes us from the conception of Jesus, who he is. Luke wants us to understand that also. There's a very popular Christmas song that some of us may have heard this year. It is a song that is sung many times by many different people. But the version I like is sung by Kenny Rogers and Wayona Judge. And in that song, it asks one main question. Mary, did you know? I would say that yes, she did know because of her witness. And she was so far aware of life, of everything that happened to her. She was aware of all the dramatic changes that were happening because of this birth of the Son of God. Yes, it would have been hard for a 16 or 17 year old to fully comprehend motherhood, much less anticipating this. Did this 16 or 17 year old really understand that the child she was swaddling is God on earth? That's what the song asked. New mothers always, always treasure everything that their babies do or that happens around the birth of their baby. It is only natural that that happens. And so it was natural for Mary to treasure all the amazing stories that the shepherds told her and she would ponder those things in her heart. But remember, God had tapped her for this special mission. She had embarked on this mission willingly. 
She could not, she could not understand everything from the beginning or, and everything that would follow. As Jesus' life unfolds, she would come to understand. As, she, as it unfolds, she would become to see the pathways that God intended her to walk on. For example, if God had chosen her to be the mother of the Lord, she would ask, why was he born in a manger? And she'd ask, why did the angel's host go to shepherds? Why didn't they come to her? What will happen next? What more would God send her way, she may ask. But she understood who it is she held in her arms. Well, when she and Joseph went up to Jerusalem for her purification and the ceremony of Jesus' name, she understood when the old priest by the name of Simeon, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said to her, Lord, now you have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. Yes, Mary did know that the child in front of her was God. She and Joseph would know that the name given to the child is more than a label. It was, a, it was more than an identification of the person. They would know that the name expressed something of the child's essential character. Mary and Joseph will know that the name will possess something of the power of the one who wore it. Mary and Joseph will know that the promise of the messenger Gabriel was indeed enfolding as he had told them. They will know the credibility of his words and the will of the father and the declaration of the one who was born as announced by ancient Israel was indeed the Messiah. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the miracle Christmas is that God was indeed born in Bethlehem to the house of David, the shepherd king. And his name will stand forever and ever as who he is and what he's done for us. It is a name that is all powerful, but it's a, all, it is a name that above all else means love. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our service with the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page four of the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, we got the one being the Father. Do him all things for me, for us and for our salvation. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the part of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the front of the Bible. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the human life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he goes to the glory of God. He has spoken to the prophets. We know I'm going Catholic, I must call the church. We acknowledge the doctrine of the Jesus and the We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sacrament of healing. God the Father, you will for all people is health and
salvation. God the Son, you came that we might have life, we might have it more abundantly. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, grant your healing grace on all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they might be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance, and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, the knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to their suffering. Grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Yes. Grant to the dying peace that is under holy death, and uphold by the grace, the consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Yes. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in lives, in our nation, and in the world. Yes. You, the Lord, who does wonders. With you, O oh Lord, is the well of life. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick, and upon those who minister to them, and all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Those of you who want healing, please come forward.
Just a reminder that we'll be having our annual meeting in the parish hall the last Sunday of January at 10 29. Uh, to be following the regular nine o'clock service. We have no choir today, so there should be an opportunity for a full choir at the end. Let's do that. <laughs> Make many of vows unto the Most High. The hymn for the officer is hymn number 497. 497. How bright appears the morning star. <laughs>
by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. eternal son, to share in your human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, with the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And on the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. 
people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feel it in their hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ. continue our service with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 9 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the blood and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 The recessional hymn, hymn number 450, 450, verses 1 to 3, all hail the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs>
through the year 2022 and safely into the year 2023. I ask you that God to guide us through this new year, to touch our hearts and the hearts of all men, so that we may go forth loving each other and doing the work of love that you require us to do. I ask these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You all have a happy new year. I hope to see you guys full of blessings.